Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make an easy sandwich loaf that you can make in about two hours. And it looks even better than this. This is our test, <laughs> test bread. My sister, the bread expert, is here. She's running the camera. Mm. And I want to show you how to do this. All right? Batter doughs you don't need. It's like a no-knead bread, but even faster, which I really like. And I think it'll turn more people on the bread baking. I've been thinking about sandwich loaves more, so you can make a sandwich, you know. Mm. And this one's pretty good. Uh, this has been around for a while. The Cook's Illustrated people did an, a recipe about it a while back, and I'm going to take some of the techniques that I learned from them, some of the other stuff I've read, and we'll make our own, okay? Here we go. So to do this recipe right, it really helps to have the standing mixer. And I'm lucky enough that my mother-in-law sent me this. I didn't buy it. Um, but you can also do this by hand. You'll need this mixer thing and one of these bowls. Okay, we're going to start the dry ingredients in here. We'll put them on the machine and watch it go. I'm going to put in one and a half cups of bread flour. Uh, works better than all-purpose flour for a batter dough. And then I put in whole wheat flour because I, I think it just, I just think we need to have more whole wheat in our lives. Okay? Like, yes, that's painter's tape, everybody. Painter's tape is, is handy. <laughs> So three quarters of a cup of whole wheat flour in here, two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, which is also a one packet. Um, you can make it a, a little more yeast if you want. Take the whisk or your fork. You notice I'm not putting any salt in here yet because we learned from the Cook's Illustrated people that they put in the salt a little later and it helps with the rise. There are. Salt and yeast have a difficult relationship. I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? <laughs> we talk about, in our No Need Bread Tips video, which is a link below, we talk about salt and yeast, okay? Because you know who behind the camera has different opinions than I do on that. So. We can talk about our various points of view about liquid measuring cups as well. One and a quarter cups of really warm water. In a dry measuring cup. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes in like this, right? Yeah, it lives on those little pegs. Set your timer for one minute and then put this on low and let it turn around, let it mix for a minute. Okay, now we're going to run this thing at a medium speed. Two minutes on medium. Alright, I forgot a couple things. Uh, this I learned from Cook's Illustrated, this, just to add a little more flavor to a quick batter, we're going to throw in melted butter and honey. This is honey from our honey bees, mm. one tablespoon. Did you know you can also spray your tablespoon and your measuring cups with the nonstick stuff before you measure something like honey? And then it slides right out. But then you can't do this. Right, <laughs> or you could stick your finger in there and... Oh because we forgot to do that before. And then another two minutes on medium. Hey, Chuppy. Who likes bread? So this looks good. You see how it's getting kind of stringy like that? That's a good sign. All right, that's our second two minutes. Now we're going to lower this puppy and then disconnect the paddle Scrape this off the paddle, and then I'm going to push all this down into the middle of the bowl, and then we're going to leave the paddle in there, plastic wrap. So I turn the oven light on, and I, you know, I just kind of preheat, warm up the oven, I guess, and then this goes in here, 20 minutes. Somebody sent us a Christmas card. Cute. That looks like linoleum block printing. It's from Nate in Colorado. Thanks for the great inspiration and entertainment. Our household enjoys your podcast content lots. Nate in Northern Colorado. Thank you. That was very nice. So this has been about 20 minutes plus. Oh, and look at that. It's definitely double. Puffy, Puffy and nice. So now we're going to add in some salt. Mix it real quick and throw it in the pan. So now we're going to do this Cook's Illustrated trick. We're going to add the salt 
halfway through the rise. The idea is that um, the salt sometimes can retard your rise, so we're gonna we gave it an extra boost. Good, good philosophy, Eric. Okay, two tablespoons of hot water per Cooks Illustrated, and I'm gonna put a tablespoon of salt in there. Teaspoon, teaspoon. Oh, a teaspoon. Hold yeah, a tablespoon of salt. Wow. I'm gonna dissolve that, and then this puppy goes back on here. And we take that warm water and drop it in, and mix this in. I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not. I'm sure KitchenAid will tell us. <laughs> we just want to incorporate that water into the dough. Mixing the salt though with water is a wonderful tip. Yeah. It really distributes it evenly throughout the dough. Okay. Oh, wrong way. Hold on. <laughs> this is a smaller loaf pan than the standard ones. Um, it is... It's an 8 by 4 and a half. This is an 8 and a half by 4 and a half. so you're going to get more lift. It's going to be more sandwich loafy. Yeah. All right, it's a little bit more narrow than your regular pan. You can use a regular pan if you got it. It's just going to come out more looking like banana bread, you know? Which we're doing a new banana bread video soon. What about adding milk? You can add milk. I've seen some of them that have milk. Milk is a nice flavoring and it gives a great color when it bakes. And if you're going to use whole wheat flour, a little more fluid might be an idea. Okay, you want to push this into the corners. It bounces right back. Yeah, it bounces right back. That's, <laughs> that's just what it does. Sometimes I shake the pan. That's probably not a good technique. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna oil the plastic wrap. So the plastic wrap, if this rises too much, it'll go onto there, like that. 20 minutes, okay? All right, if you notice here, it's starting to rise above the plastic. So take the plastic off. Take two. All right, I forgot. At that 20 minute mark, you had taken the plastic off, take it out of the oven, because it's gonna preheat the oven to about 375 while that's doing its last rise. This is gonna come over the top a little more, it'd be nice. Let's fire up our stove. And the match goes up. All right, 375 while that still rises, okay? I've got a little egg wash here, some scrambled egg with a little water. I'm just going to go across the top. This has actually risen a little too much. All right, we're in. Let's go watch the dogs. Digital thermometer, we want 208, 210. Cool gloves that John sent me. Ooh, this over rose a little bit. Ooh. 25, 26. 208. Very it's good. bread. I think that over rose. What can you do? We call this over proofing. We let it rise a little too much, but that's okay. It's garden fork. On the second rise, when we take it out of the oven so we can preheat the oven, just keep an eye on it. When it starts to just peak over the top of your pan, it's ready to bake. And I kind of was doing other things and it kind of went Bruh. So that's called over proofing from my sister, the expert. But let's try this, okay? Nice sandwich crumb though. Yeah. 